So today we got a little project, got one liter of water here, and I want to see, can we actually get one liter of water to boil with the simplest solar setup possible like we have here? And how much energy is that actually going to take and how long will it take so we can do some productive work like cooking a little lunch? So the setup couldn't be easier. I have an eight inch electric element here for an electric cooktop and that was 24 ohms of resistance across this element. Then I just cut off the little spade ends and add these Wago 221 inline splices. A little bit modified there. I had to cut off a little bit of the housing to make sure there's a secure connection. But that makes it easy on, easy off with the solar cables because we are plugging that element directly into the solar panels. And then I'll just put it in the strip tray so it can set nicely. And then we'll go ahead and get everything plugged in and set up. So I'm starting to do my test to see if I can do this with one solar panel. This is just a used 320 watt Trina that I got off Facebook Marketplace for about 75 bucks per panel. And I'm going right from my MC4 connectors into this little power analyzer. And why I use this is this is actually what's going to give us the overall energy. You can see amp hours there of accumulated current and then watt hours. How much energy did we create during this trial? So I'm just doing a test right now. You can see we're pulling about 33 volts and 1.4 amps for a total of about 47 watts. Then just running through 10 gauge solar right into the electric burner. So this test is just how hot can I get that burner? Even it's a little early in the morning, 10 a.m. What's the temperature there? It's definitely kicking off heat, but we're obviously gonna have to be over 212 degrees Fahrenheit to even have a shot at boiling the water. So let's take a look at what we're seeing right now. And then that will determine whether or not we're gonna need another panel. So we'll just use this little FLIR one that connects up through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to your phone to give you a thermal image and video feed of what's going on in front of you. So it gives us kind of the whole picture of what's going on with the burner. In addition, the hottest point, it can easily just pull that out. I mean, we're heating up, but the hottest spot is only getting to about 133, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it's sealed the deal that we need one more 320 watt panel wired in series to even have a hope at getting this to a boiling point. Now, if you're just getting into solar, I think it's really smart to watch videos like this that introduce you to a few different topics, a few different equations, some of the parts you need to kind of start exploring your own system, whether you just want to power a solar shed or maybe have some power backup solutions for your home to power your critical appliances. But the same knowledge helps you be an educated consumer, even if you're looking for solar on your home. Now, I've done both professionally installed system, and you can see a link in the description is where I start off in just a couple minutes with some information on my home and my monthly power bill, I was able to see the size of that system, which is about 11 kilowatts, and roughly what was that cost after the 30% federal tax credit. I have also done a DIY system, and Project Solar helps me do that whole process. They help me with the designs, the prints, submitting the permits, getting all the materials delivered. Then I went to work in terms of the labor, and then we scheduled our inspection and got power to operate from our utility, and we are up and running for a much reduced price because I took on all that labor. Now, either of those options made sense for me because I still have net metering and also some significant state incentives. So I wouldn't snooze too long if you're thinking about getting that for your home, just to make sure that net metering doesn't go away or your current incentives don't go away. So you'll see those links in the description below the video, and I need to go grab another solar panel so we can get this water boiling. Well, let's go ahead and add that second panel here, but still keep our setup as simple as humanly possible. So what are you gonna do here? Well, I'm gonna undo my power analyzer here, just undo the MC4 connectors, and then we're gonna wire these two panels just in series. So if you're not familiar with what that means, I'm just taking the positive side of this first panel and wiring it into the negative side of our second panel. So we're basically daisy chaining these together. And now my two ends will be one from this panel and the other from this panel, and they'll be combining together. And when you go in series, you're just adding up your voltages, but wait till you see what that does to our power. So the voltages we'd expect to be now somewhere around 66, 67, 68, but the power actually goes up by more than a factor of two. 
All right, so we see the voltage, yep, it's at 65. But as you notice, that has now allowed our current to go up by about double as well. So we have now quadrupled the overall power that we're delivering to our cooktop. And hopefully this will get us to the temperatures we need to see how much energy do we actually have to put into that cooktop to get one liter of water to boil and make our ramen noodles. All right, so we'll go ahead and see what I'd like to see that we're well over 212 and we are. And I think it's actually going to warm up considerably past the 230 mark as the sun's starting to peak out more and more. So we're ready to start the trial. Plenty of sun now and starting to kick off our tests. Let's see if we can heat this guy up. And then let's also get a starting temp here. Looks like we're at about 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you might be asking yourself, we well, you have two of those panels, that should be 640 watts at standard test conditions. How are you only getting 170 or 180 watts? And it's actually a really simple relationship just back to Ohm's law of V equals IR. So we saw our voltage was 66 volts. And if we wanted to determine the current that we could expect, we need to know the resistance. Well, we do know the resistance. We measured 24 ohms across that heating element, right? That is our resistor in the system. So you take 24 ohms, and then to get the expected current, you just divide your 66 by 24 and get 2.75 amps as your expected current. And that's exactly what we saw on the power analyzer. So this system is very simple, which is the pros and the cons of the system, right? We do not have a charge controller, which you would see in pretty much any DIY solar setup or portable power station, where it's able to track the maximum power point with a variable resistor and get you to the most power for your conditions. Then it lands that power and stores it in energy in your battery, and then your battery delivers that to an inverter, which is connected up to your appliance to do some type of useful work. Here, we're going from panels directly into the resistor, so there's no variability. And if we wanted to increase the overall power which is just going to be is going to be our voltage multiplied by our current which is 181.5 watts well really in this case we just got to add more panels right so we got to increase this to most likely 99 and keep stepping that up by adding panels and then we're going to go ahead and increase our power in a super simplified system like this let's say if you're trying to do this and power a solar powered water heater you might have a system as simple as this and you can also do a little bit more research and get the right resistance level for your application to get that overall power that you want to put into heating your water so let's go ahead and do a quick check here. And overall that is looking promising with all the condensation on the top. Then we'll go ahead and get our temp. All right, things are heating up. It's been about a half an hour and we're at 138 on our way to 212 to get boiling water. So we're two hours in and right at 201 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're 11 degrees Fahrenheit under when water boils at 212. But I think we're ready to toss the ramen in and kind of finish up this test, seeing how much overall energy we had to put in to actually get this to boil. And you can see all the steam coming out. So we are almost there. So I'm going to go out and see how many actual watt hours we needed because of all that inefficiency, right? We're rejecting a lot of heat to the overall environment since there's only about 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The pot of water was losing a lot of energy. So theoretically, how much energy would it take for us to actually heat up 75 degrees Celsius, so from 25 degrees Celsius, which was pretty much our starting point to 100 degrees Celsius, boiling water, that's a delta of 75 degrees Celsius. We just use, use the equation Q, energy equals the mass times a constant and multiplied by the delta T or the difference in temperature that we're trying to gain. So all we have to do is multiply those out. So the 1000 grams, which is one kilogram, which is the weight of one liter of water, that is why the metric system is so valuable. The conversions are very easy. And then we'll by 75 degrees Celsius. And then that's going to equal about 315,000 joules. Then we can convert joules into watt hours, which would equal about 87.5 watt hours. 
Now again, we have an inefficient system, so we're gonna have to do some multiple of this to actually get that water to boil. Let me know your guess down in the comments. How many watt hours do you think it actually took for us actually to get the water boiling or at least close to boiling and cook the ramen noodles? If I had to guess, it's probably a multiple of three or four, but let's go check the power analyzer and see what the final answer is. So just confirming that we are done and our ramen noodles are cooked, which they look awesome. So let's see what the power analyzer is saying. All right, let's see what this guy says. Right there, 406 total watt hours. There's a little clouds in the sky, so the power right now actually went down a little bit. So 406 is really about a factor of five over the theoretical amount of energy needed. So I think the factor of five is reasonable. I mean, we're losing so much heat to the environment. Obviously, we're gonna to have to put a lot more energy in. Let me know if you have any questions or just generally on your own projects around the house. Now, if you're just getting started in DIY solar, a great place to start is this video right here. And that's gonna walk you through the three basic ways to wire up your panels with series, parallel, and series parallel, and kind of the whys behind those three different approaches to wiring panels together. And then if you wanna look at a more practical solution, which would be landing your solar power into a portable power station for a whole host of different applications, check out this video right here and we'll wire up a very common EcoFlow portable power station, which I think is great for most homeowners, whether you want a power backup solution, you want something for camping, something for the job site, and again, just a lot of different applications for a pretty reasonable price. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.